what's going on right now, from our point of view at least, is that uh, the higher interest rates and higher inflation uh, are, are acting like taxes on the system. And we've been talking for a while about this, about uh, consumption slowing down dramatically. If you look at retail sales, and I'm talking about real retail sales, take out the inflation and uh, real consumption. Uh, we've seen a dramatic uh, slowdown since, uh, since October, and we are beginning to see inventories pile up. Uh, all of that uh, is, is working out the way we expected it to. Our surprise is that uh, many economists and strategists out there aren't putting two and two together. They're paying attention to other variables, which uh, there, are, uh, conf there is conflicting evidence, but um, they're paying attention to other variables that support their point of view. In her 33-minute Big Ideas report, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest spoke at length about various topics, including monetary policy, fiscal policy, market signals, and innovation. Wood was very clear about our stock picks being down 75% at one point, but she suggests that the reason behind this is because her firm is as close to venture capital firm in the public equity market as you can find, meaning in the short term, her stock picks are seen as high risk because she is early, but according to her five-year time horizon, she will win out big. Wood proclaims that innovation solves problems and we have a lot of problems to solve in the world right now, which is why she's so bullish on her innovation platforms. Wood considers that the geopolitical turmoil between Russia and Ukraine has escalated the timeline for these innovations to mature and that consumers will eventually turn to innovation to combat everything that is coming. We are already seeing glimpses of this with Bitcoin donations to Ukraine and the Canadian truckers. Have a listen to Cathy's analysis. Uh, so we've already made the assumption that the valuations are, are going to come down. We believe uh, what's happening in Russia and the Ukraine right now is turbocharging the shock to high valuation stocks that began last February when we were all uh, getting vaccinated and hopes were that the economy would continue to gain uh, momentum. And, uh, and so we now believe that Russia and Ukraine have turbocharged that shock. Uh, commodities, they're on fire. We believe this is a supply problem, much more than a demand problem. I'm sure there's a scramble to build inventories of anything now, anything in the energy complex, uh, any of the metals that uh, come out of Russia, uh, food out of the bread basket of the Ukraine. Uh, interestingly, the commodity price increases are in the face of the dollar increasing. Uh, the dollar increasing tends to put pressure on prices, uh, but this, un this supply problem and maybe inventory hoarding is overcoming that. The dollar is going up because it's a, it's a, a flight to safety currency. And uh, we're also seeing other flights to safety. So the dollar is up about two and a half percent since the end of January, when the Russia-Ukraine um, issues were becoming more obvious. Uh, and then the other two flights to safety we've seen, uh, Bitcoin, 6.1 percent, and gold, 8.3 percent. So uh, the crypto networks are... are uh, proving their worth as a, a neutral technology platform. Uh, the, we're seeing donations of both Bitcoin and uh, Ether to, to the Ukraine. I think it's 50 million, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the last week. Uh, and uh, we're also seeing Bitcoin as a currency hedge for Russian citizens who uh, are watching the ruble um, get, get uh, hammered here. Uh, and, you know, these are not the oligarchs. In fact, there's not enough uh, there's not enough Bitcoin out there for the oligarchs to hedge, uh, and they can, they they have been hedging uh, for years anyway. This is for the average Russian citizen who actually is aghast. Many of them, as we hear it, aghast at what's going on in in Russia. Uh, Tesla is providing free supercharging. Uh, in Poland, uh, Poland's taking in, of course, a lot of refugees. Uh, and of course, we know that longer term, uh, electric vehicles are going to help um, with the demand destruction of oil. 
Uh, I think the prices alone will destroy a, a lot of uh, demand for oil and accelerate the shift to uh, electric vehicles. And especially, uh, we believe robo taxis will be electric and they'll be on the road 50 to 60 percent of the day. So that acceleration away from oil um, will will um, will happen as we move into into the autonomous realm. We're seeing uh, a, a lot of talk about renewable uh, renewables, especially nuclear, um, to reduce uh, dependence on Russia. Of course, solar and and wind, but I think nuclear is becoming um, less of a negative, even to some environmentalists who who have studied it a little bit more uh, carefully. Um, we're seeing. Uh, we're seeing, of course, the social platforms providing real, real-time real updates and providing you know, a, a glimpse into the horrors that are taking place there. And I think that has put a lot of pressure on um, financial institutions and others uh, to boycott uh, or stop doing business with Russia. It's terrible for Ru the, the Russian citizens who do not want this invasion. Uh, but uh, I think we've never seen uh, the financial system used as such a weapon, uh, and uh, we'll see we'll see if it works. Um, we also know uh, uh, about Starlink. Uh, uh, I think um, the president of Ukraine uh, reached out to Elon Musk and say, "Hey, we're being cut off out uh, out there." And of course, Elon sent uh, Starlink to the rescue. Uh, so uh, that that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal that uh, we can continue to uh, communicate with these people. And again, everyone around the world can see the horror uh, that uh, that Ukraine is experiencing. So uh, while the public markets don't appreciate what's going on in the innovation world, in fact, quite the opposite, they have. Uh, taken a sledgehammer to, to these stocks in the last year. The private markets uh, certainly appreciate what innovation can do and will do uh, to help solve the problems that have, have um, arisen from the coronavirus crisis, uh, and the supply chain problems, now uh, Russia and, and the Ukraine. Um, According to a study that um, Max Friedrich, uh, uh, our, one of our fintech analysts, uh, has done using Crunchbase, the Crunchbase database, uh, it looks like while uh, innovation stocks in the public markets have, have dropped, certainly pure play innovation, those that are not in the indexes, those in the indexes are uh, uh, the, the innovation stocks in the indexes tend to be a little more old world. We even see from, from meta platforms, uh, formerly Facebook, that the once disruptor is being disrupted. Uh, but uh, if you look at the non-benchmark uh, innovation uh, stocks, uh, you'll see that they're down 60, 70%. So it's a replay of the COVID crisis. And uh, as we said back then, innovation solves problems. Uh, and I'll say it again because it is true. What we're seeing the private world uh, do is actually um, uh, move into up rounds. Over the last 20 years, the uh, 20 years, the last year, uh, the average up round has been 20%. So down 60% in the public markets, up 20% in the uh, in the private markets. And uh, we think the private markets have, have uh, gotten the plot and uh, corroborate our point of view. And truth will win out, just like uh, uh, this idea that innovation solves problems was a winning strategy coming out of the coronavirus. We believe it will be ever more so as our five platforms, uh, DNA sequencing, adaptive robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology all scale exponentially uh, during the next five to 10 years. If you want to listen to the full interview, click on the link provided in the description. We would love to hear your thoughts. Comment down below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Thank you for watching Daily Dose Crypto.